what's going on you guys so today in this video we are going to be talking about 10 well i guess it'd actually be 11 um uh, post spawn bass lures that i personally love to use during this time of year now these are all baits that i have personally had good luck with now these are all baits that i have caught fish before and a couple of them i've actually caught some of my biggest uh, five fish limits ever using them during this time of year. So let me pull this up a little bit closer so I can reach the baits a little bit better. Okay, so number one, when the post spawn goes out, the fish are still a little bit slow. They're not exactly running around, you know, chasing balls of bait in the middle of the lake quite yet. So what I like to use is one of these three baits. These three baits are the main three that I like to throw during, well, basically, these are the main baits that I would throw during and after the spawn. These are the baits that I would throw as the fish are getting done spawning and still spawning a little bit. So, number one would be a fluke style bait. This here is the Dox Lures Drop Shot Minnow. Or a trick worm, preferably white or black, depending on your water clarity. Um, on a sunnier day, I would probably go with a white. If you're on a cloudier day, I would probably still go with a white or black. Uh, white is just a good all-around color, in my opinion. And another bait would be a fluke. Now, like I said with that, this one here, this one here is a normal size fluke. Well, this one here is not a normal size fluke. This here is the 7-inch mag fluke. You can see there is quite a bit difference. Now, why I like this bait, now believe it or not, I've caught three fish on these and I only have two left. Why? Because the fish I caught on them were not small. They were three and a half, close to four pounds, and they just tore the day gun things up. Uh, I caught one using it as a drop shot bait, like a magnum drop shot bait, and I caught one using it as a weightless fluke bait. Um, and I think I caught another one doing the same thing. But yeah, I've only got two of these left. I'm getting ready to buy some more, I think, at some point, because they are good baits. My favorite color is the Smoky Shad or the Arkansas Shiner, um, but the Arkansas Shiner, I don't think they make it in the mag. I don't know that yet, um, but in my opinion, pearl flukes are just a little bit too uh, bright, especially for the Magnum one, but there's people that catch them on it, so, you know, whatever. But yeah, a mag fluke is pretty good as well. Now, two other baits that I love to throw this time of, or that time of year um, it's not quite that time of year yet here, but down south in the summer, or down south in Texas, not in the summer. Now south in Texas and Florida, they're starting to get this time of year, so I figured why not go ahead and make this video. Now I will be making an outdoor video of this soon, showing you guys how I like to fish these baits, if the wind ever shuts up and lets me have good audio. But the other two baits are some sort of flipping baits, something like a Rage Bug, or the Striking Rodent, or the Dox Lures Flat Runner. Those three are probably my favorite. I forgot to get one of the Flat Runners. Those there are really good. Now, another good bait for this time of year is, oops, hey, looky there, we dropped a lure. Shocking. Anyway, a chatter bait, or just a plain swim bait. Now this here is a Striking Rage Blade in Green Pumpkin, with one of the Dox Lures Green Pumpkin trailers, and this here is a Strike King Rage Tail swimmer in the 4.75 inches. If I don't, for, uh, if I don't remember right or whatever, but yeah, chatter bait and a swim bait. Now these two baits here are the two baits that I was talking about originally with the frog as well that I will be talking about here in a second. One of my biggest five fish limits ever. I think it ended up being like 14 pounds or something like that was caught this time of year on a chatterbait. Now, not this specific chatterbait. It was actually caught on that white chatterbait over there. But this here is the one that I grabbed first, so whatever. But yeah, chatterbaits are good. Now, another five fish limit that is probably one of my bigger ones, I'd say it's probably close to 15 pounds like the other one is, was caught on a swim bait. Now, not this specific swim bait either. I actually ran out of the other swim bait that I actually caught them on originally, and I've never been able to find out, I don't, I don't even know the name of these swim baits. That's what's funny, is I bought them from Walmart in like the $1.98 bin or whatever, and I thought, hey, you know what, these look pretty good. 
went out and just hammered them on them. I done it twice, two different days. I just hammered them on this swim bait, and I don't know. I, all I know is the brand, and it's Yum. I don't know the name. I don't know the size. I never measured them, so I don't know what size they are. I don't know the color name. Nothing. I just don't know. So, you know, I try to find baits that look like them. You know, this one here kind of looks like it, but it's a little bit darker gray. But yeah, you know, this here is a good color. Uh, the IU is a good color. You know, anything that mimics a bluegill and a shad. I mean, I've made a whole separate video on this. The, uh, what was it called? Something like uh, the dual purpose colors or something like that. I don't remember. Um, but it was a really good video. Um, I thought it was a good one anyway. Talking about uh, buying a shad and bluegill colored lures. You know, one bait that looks like both. And this IU is a good color for that. But anyway, another... Oh, my neck hurts. Anyway, another bait that I've caught a lot of fish on. And especially during this time. I've caught more fish on it during this time of the year than any other time of the year almost. And that is a frog. A frog, I caught one of my personal best last year during the end of April. I think it was, uh, I don't know if I have the exact date on my phone, but I'll check it. I'm pretty sure it was like either April 12th or, no, not April 12th. I think it was April 29th. I don't know. Let me check this real quick. Um, yep, it doesn't say. Okay. I'm pretty sure I want to say that it was caught April 29th or something like that. Somewhere around the later April time it was caught on this frog. And I'll actually show you the picture if it'll come back up. If it'll show up good on the camera. I hope it will. It was a good fish. It was probably my personal best at that time. We didn't have a scale at that time. But yeah. I hope that picture came up all right. But anyway, yeah, th that fish was caught on this frog. And it was not probably, it probably wasn't my biggest five fish limit because a lot of them were like just around two pound. But I did catch two about that size. And so that kind of bumped up the size of the five fish limit a little bit. So I'd say that five fish limit was probably around 12, 13 pound. Probably not as big as the swim bait or chatter bait limit was. But it was all caught on that one right there. Actually, I think it was probably maybe 20 minutes of fishing. I caught the full five fish limit with this right here. Now, that there is a Spro Popping Frog Junior, I think it is, um, in midnight black or black midnight, something like that color. Really good color. One of my favorites. Next, now this bait here is a bait that is more for the bigger fish. This is a bait for the bigger size of fish. Now, people have caught little fish on these. I've caught little fish on these. My cousin caught a one pound, 11 ounce bluegill on one of these. So obviously small fish are going to bite these. I have no clue how in the world he caught it, but he did. He showed me pictures of it. And that is a 10 inch worm. Now this here is the old monster. This is the exact same color and worm style that he caught that giant bluegill on. But I've seen so many people use these during this time of year, you know, the post spawn and they've caught some monsters on it. Now, my favorite way of fishing this is obviously on a Texas rig. If I was going to throw this um, during this time of the year when the grass is just starting to come up, I would throw it with a quarter or lighter ounce weight. Now, why, you're probably wondering, just so it won't bury down in that grass as much. If you're using a half ounce bullet weight, that's going to bury that worm in the grass, and you're going to ruin your cast with that. But if you're throwing a little quarter ounce or eighth ounce even, a little quarter ounce or eighth ounce weight, and it just sitting there, it can sit on top of the grass depending on how thick the grass is. It can sit there on top of the grass, and it just sits there. And pretty soon that fish sees it, and it comes up there and just engulfs it. So yeah. Now another good worm. I've caught a lot of fish on this worm. Um, I've caught uh, like three or four different five fish limits on this specific worm. And that is a Strike King bullworm in green pumpkin as well that is a really good worm for this time of the year as well but i couldn't find any in that exact color in my tackle box i know there's in there but i couldn't find them another bait that i've talked about before i've made a whole entire like 17 or 18 minute long video on it i'm sure you can hear it because it is very loud 
but I've made a whole video talking about this specific bait, and that is a spinner bait. Now, a spinner bait does exactly the same thing as a chatter bait does in the sense that it has a lot of commotion, but this is for a little bit more of uh, windier conditions. Now, if, you're, if your weather's like this right here, windier conditions would be good for a spinner bait. Now, if you have, let's say, let's put a scenario together real quick. Let's say you have windy conditions, but you have water that looks like a Yoohoo. You know, the chocolate milk. This here is what I go through. Probably not this color. I'd probably go with a chartreuse and white or maybe black and blue. But I wouldn't go with this. Now you're probably wondering why. I mean, it's got gold blades. It's got chartreuse and white. This here will put off a lot more thump and action than the spinnerbait will. Even though the spinnerbait's got that giant willow leaf blade, it'll still put off a little bit more vibration. Plus, it's got that swim bait back there that's just kicking behind it. And... It just will work better in muddier water. I've caught more fish in muddier water with a chatterbait over a spinnerbait. Now, when I like a spinnerbait is when the water's a little bit clear. You know, you maybe you have, you know, around here, clear water is about six inches to a foot of visibility. Some places, you know, three inches of visibility is clear. Some places, 17 feet of visibility is clear. You know, there's different places that have different clarities. You know, if you're on Table Rock, which is notorious for super duper clear water, you know, maybe not throw one of these exactly. You know, maybe throw something a little bit smaller, downsize the blades a little bit. It'd probably work well. And if you're clear, fishing clear water, get rid of the gold. The gold, I've just seen it too many times, the gold does not work very well in clear water. But, you know, who knows? I've, I've caught fish on black and blue spinner baits in like four foot clear water so i mean fluke fish does happen you know but yeah this here i would fish with a little bit clearer a little bit windier conditions you know if you have calm muddy water a chatterbait would be better if you have clear windier water that makes no sense but you know what i mean i would go with a spinnerbait now that's not to say the spinnerbait's not going to catch them in muddy water I've seen it. And I've done it before. It does work, but I've had a little bit more luck, a little bit more luck with chatterbaits over spinnerbaits. That's just my opinion. You know, that's just from my experience. You know, some of you guys may have had different luck than I have. You know, whatever. That just sometimes happens. But then, of course, you know, being the top water king and all that, I have to throw a top water in there. And if I'm going to pick a top water. Um, you know, from experience, I'm going to pick a popper. From, um, seeing other people use these and catch fish on them, I would probably pick a buzzbait also. Um, just not from experience, but just from, you know, knowledge of other people. I've seen way too many people use a buzzbait early post-spawn and catch some giant fish. I've seen people catch their personal best, you know, 12s and 10 pounders on a buzzbait fishing, you know, in mid-April uh, to late May, or late, uh, April, you know, buzz baits do work, I've seen it, I've never caught a fish on a buzz bait personally, so I'm not going to put it in here as a, um, as a personal, uh, luck bait, but the popper, I would put it in there, because popper, you know, I've watched a show, I watched a show a long time ago, I don't remember the name of it, but it was probably one of the more informational shows on TV. You know, you see a lot of TV shows, they're just catching one after another fish, and they don't ever talk about the bait specifically. And this guy was talking about the bait specifically and why he's throwing it. And when he told me this, I, put, I took this to heart, basically. I heard what he was talking about, put it to use, and have done it, and I've caught a lot of bigger, better-sized fish doing this. He was throwing a Rebel Pop R, a little bit smaller than this one here. This here's a Strike King um, Splash Popper, I think it is. And this here is in the clear or nude color, whatever you want to say. I just call it clear because it's clear. But anyway, he was throwing a Rebel Popper, and I think it was like chrome silver or something like that. And what he was doing was he was fishing it in the back of a pocket next to boat docks and clumps of grass. And he was fishing for those fry guarding bass. You know, and if you don't know what a fry guarding bass is, it's basically a male bass that is protecting the baby bass. You know, fry are tiny, tiny, microscopic, almost, little baby bass. 
and that male is protecting them. Now, something going boop, boop, boop over their heads, that bass is going to say, hey, whatever this is, this minnow, shad, bluegill, crappie, whatever it is, frog, it could be a bird, is trying to eat my babies, you know, it's going to come up there and destroy it. And I, and I heard this guy talk about it, and I thought it registered. Like, it was, it was clicking the whole time he was talking. And so I went out and put it to use, and it works super well. I've caught a lot of my topwater bass during this time of the year on a popper. Now, that's not to say that a walking bait wouldn't work, too. I've never personally tried a walking bait during this time of year. I've more leaned towards a popper because I know from experience and from other people's experience that it works really well. Um, I've seen other people's experience, pe pe yeah, people using buzz baits. You know, I've seen people catch some giants, like I said, on buzz baits during this time of the year. It could work for them. I've just always thrown a popper. A popping frog does the exact same thing. If you're in an area where there's a little bit thicker cover, throw that popping frog. It does the exact same thing. So, yeah, I hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We're getting really close to 700 already. I don't even know how in the world we flew past 600 so quickly, but we did. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you have any suggestions for videos, let me know because I will most likely do them because doing these daily videos, I run out of ideas pretty quick. Thanks for watching. Bye.